Ask an Engineers. Hey everybody, welcome to another fantastic and fabulous Ask an Engineers. We're broadcasting live from downtown Manhattan in the Adafruit factory in this little nook where we have crammed myself, <laughs> Lady Ada, the engineer, Phil, on camera control, and today's special guest. John Janier. John Janier, who you can tell by the things is who the engineer you can ask questions of because he's saying Ask an Engineer. Yeah. Uh, now's a good time to ask him all sorts of photo stuff, but later. First, that's right. We have much things on the show. On tonight's show, the code is Alta Vista. John Janier will. Tell Whoa, us it's I totally said. like the '90s. That's right. Yeah, man. We'll talk about the show and tell some awesome stuff that was on the show. Some great news in the world of makers. We'll talk about that. Some sad news in the world of tech. Some interesting news in the world of makers and open source and Arduino. We'll have a pack at the mailbag. The Adafruit Learning System. Wearable Wednesday. Three Thursday, Pi Day. We'll talk about John, all the stuff he's taking photos of at Adafruit, and more. We'll have some new products. We'll have some top secret stuff. Ooh. We'll answer your questions. We'll have a trivia mm. question. All that and more on Ask an Engineer. And stay tuned for the entire hour because we have a new photo of MOSFET. Yeah, we got a photo of MOSFET. That's, that's the special Even treat. Even I haven't seen it yet. It's super special treat. All right. Okay. So uh, welcome, John. Yes. Thank you. Uh, John is now a New Yorker. You moved to New York. Yes, I did. This is one of the reasons you're here. Yes. Yeah, how do you like it so far, being in New York? Uh, it's great. Yeah. I love it. You were commuting a little bit further. Okay. You can't follow me in New Yorker if you say I love it. You're like, ah, it's okay. It's great. I love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> um, and next up, as soon as you become a resident of New York, the next thing is jury duty, because they you're, right. you're instantly going to be, call you for jury be duty. added. Um, uh, for the folks who don't know, John Janier is our director of imaging here at Adafruit. Uh, he's been part of Adafruit for years, and recently joined Adafruit. And also, you're an engineer. Yes. So you're you're uh, what? John's one of the people I like to call a triple threat, and that was <laughs> back in like the Fred Astaire days, someone who can sing, dance, and act. John's yeah. one of those people. And that's like analog, digital, and RF. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. It's exactly like that. All right. Um, let's pay some bills. Instead of RF, I do photons. He does photons. Same thing. Which is the same thing. Yeah. All right. The code is Alta Vista. 10% off everything in stock if we stocked it in the 90s now. 10% um, <laughs> off everything in stock in the Adafruit store. Is that the Alta Vista logo? Yeah. Well, That's like one of the them. last one, the okay. original one that everybody like remembers. So, yeah. John, you suggested. Okay. Um, what possessed you? <laughs> well, because Alta Vista is still running, they're shutting it down. On Monday, Man. July eighth, they're July shutting 8th. it down. Yeah. All right, everybody, go out and search. They actually were a pretty good search engine. I used them right. for a bit. Like in like ninety five, ninety six, when there was nothing else. No, no, even even when there was like Google, I still use them because they were actually um, they because the Google had a little bit more filtering than Alta Vista, so it's like if yeah. you really wanted to like dig down and find like a really obscure thing, sometimes Alta Vista would have it. It was a very good search engine, though. It's quite good. Yeah, when they started it, it was actually it was. Uh, a subdomain on digital.com. Yeah. So you'd be like altavista.digital.com. And it was great because it was the time before SEO. So when you would search for something, you'd actually get results relevant right, to that rather than. Right, the spammers figured out <coughs> the, Yeah, it was awesome. How to game it. Um, so that's the good old days. Yeah. All right, let's hit the show and tell. Um, as you know, on the show and tell, every single week we have people show up from around the world to show their projects. Okay. This week. Project. First up, Lenora showed up, and she had like this foam speaker thing that she made out of a King Tut float that she made for some event, and she's just like, I'm not gonna throw away this King Tut head. So she like <laughs> turned it into like a resonant speaker cavity. Go Tut, whatever, I don't know. Yeah, it was cool. I mean, yeah, it was, it was very cool. Head, um, and I don't know how good it sounded, but whatever music she was playing, which was like pretty like industrial, it, uh, it did sound quite loud, so I guess yeah, foam. Works well. I kind of I like the idea of this thing being on the wall and not telling anybody it's a speaker yeah. and it just and then, makes like, me. Yeah. Like, like for Halloween, it'd be good because like, we could like make it like say things like "I'm haunting you from right. the grave" or something. Like that. <laughs> Build me a pyramid. Build me a pyramid. Okay, Lance showed up. He's got more hat. Uh, it's a mouse hat, and he uh, showed off his flex circuit. He's working on this uh, mouse 
hat that strips out a hat so people who uh, do not have motor control in their hands can use their necks and uh, heads to control a hat. Mouse, using their hat. Uh, you know what I mean. John W. came back, he had his OLED watch. He's been working on like watch projects for a couple weeks now, a couple months now. He showed up, he has like a really lovely little watch face. It's a ground. It looks like an analog watch, but it's digital. It's both analog and digital. It's crazy. Uh, Jan came back. Uh, he had the Arduino piano before. He now has a, an even better Arduino piano. It has a 9-volt battery. It has a cardboard case. It has like MIDI out. It's just intense. You can't control GarageBand from this thing. It's cool. And uh, he also built like a little programming shield for his Arduino. So you can program uh, 328 chips, uh, AT Tiny chips. It's kind of cute. Like fit on top and there's little multiple little sockets. Um, there was also a sumo bot he built, which actually kind of intense. It had like these like four um, servos and there's like chains on them and they could hold his iPhone and he would FaceTime and it would like wo wover around and he built a f controller with an XB. It was kind of it was kind of cool, very intense. And then finally Isaac uh, came back, showed us uh, his radio scope that he's working on. It's still rainy. One day when it's not rainy, he's gonna try this radio scope, which will be cool. And he's data logging the signal with the uh, Adafruit data logging shield. So we'll see how that goes. Mm. There was a it was a fun show. Yep. There's five cool projects. Actually, more. Jane had like three. Yeah. All right. And the uh, OLED watch. Uh, John OLED had watch. The, um, the Nook. Oh, yeah. And he had his Nook with this. Because Nooks are 150 bucks. So go to your Barnes & Noble if you want a Nook. Now's a good time to get one. Yeah. It's like half price. The screens are great. And it's like, yeah, it, just buying a raw screen of that resolution and size is like $60, $70 at least. And then you don't even get the battery and then like the computer. So it's a really good deal, even if you like end up getting it. And they're very light, too. Yeah. They're much lighter than any other tablet. Excellent for data sheet reading. Okay. Lady Ada, how does someone get on the show and tell? To get on the show and tell, go to the Google Plus page at plus2google.com slash plus symbol Adafruit, and look for the post where we say, comment here to get added to our show and tell circle. Comment there will add you to the circle so that your Google personality profile thing will be invited every week at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time to show off your project. Get added once and show off your project multiple times, which people do, which is yeah. great, because you get to see updates. Yeah, a lot of projects... Uh, one of my favorite ones is a DIY radio telescope, and that, yeah. just, that just takes time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and he got it from, he's making it from an old, uh, Isaac's making it from an old satellite dish. Yeah. And, you know, it's been raining. It's cool. So yeah. he can't. Um, Your iterations are, are based on the cycles of nature. Yeah. You can't really speed yeah, you it up. Gonna, but, you know, it's going to, that's not going to rain all the time. Yeah. Okay. Um, Maybe, Maybe next week he'll show up. Some news in the maker world. Uh, yeah. So one of the sites that uh, I've been watching for a while, um, I like uh, Emil, who's behind it. He's been doing all the right stuff. Is uh, Tindy? Tindy celebrates one year. Wow. Yeah, Yay. John. Have you, have you have um, you have you seen what's on Tindy? Do you watch the Tindy once in a while? I check it out once in a while. Um, I haven't actually. I've been getting his emails, but I haven't had a chance to really yeah. check it out lately. There's some makers on there that they'll try out Tindy, and if there is um, a lot of response, they'll then go on and say, Hey, Adafruit, do you want to? Yeah. Sell, sell some of uh, mm -hmm. um, my products. Um, that's been kind of neat to watch. And it's neat to see that there's an a ecosystem. So you can download a free tool. You can learn on learn.adafruit.com yeah. on how to maybe make some circuits. You yeah. can figure out what people want in this community. Use uh, OSH Park, which uh, you just got some boards in. Yeah, I love yeah, OSH Park. Land, land yeah. So there's actually, it's kind of cool. There's actually an ecosystem. Ecosystem. It's sort of like kit it's sort of like Tindy. Sort of like a small scale. It's better than like a, an accelerator sort of thing. Yeah, it's just, it's just to get people started, yeah. and so they can they can get something out there and get a feel for it. Because one of the things is a lot of people come to us with ideas or or projects, and we're like, well, like you know, is is this really going to work? And we don't know. And it, it's a good way to um, test the market to see if people really like that design. Yeah. So that's been neat to watch that. Really good uh, maker, uh, maker company. Yeah. Uh, next up, some sad news. Um, this was uh, Douglas um, Engelbert uh, passed away, uh, age of, I think, 88. Um, the, the obituaries and all the things that they're writing about are saying inventor of the computer mouse, but he did a lot more than that. What was mm -hmm. interesting yeah. is uh, he did this thing called Mother of All Demos, where it was like basically Skype, uh, Google Docs, <laughs> Gmail, yeah. Video conferencing, collaborative stuff, all in one in like 1968. Well, what's neat is that like if you read like Vannevar Bush and who like was doing stuff at the same time and when you know is kind of this like well-known like MIT professor type, and um, he they came up with the idea of like life blogging and hypertext and like Wikipedia, all these ideas. They're just like 
we only have like 20 bytes of RAM. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Damn it! <laughs> like we can only store like a megabyte, right? Yeah. Like, it's like they're like, oh, like a megabyte takes up like a room. But if only we had more storage, we could actually do the stuff. Like they had the ideas. They were just they didn't have Wi-Fi. They didn't have yeah. terabytes of storage. They didn't have Ethernet. They just didn't have the technology that didn't have the chips that were dense enough and low cost enough to do this. I mean, people now we have ideas for what the technology of the future might be, but like it's just very hard to do. Yeah. So. Uh that's uh, cool. You great, what the great, great guy, and uh, lots of articles being written, and a lot of people are saying um, this is one of the people that uh, really painted a picture of the future in an accurate way. Um, and uh, uh, who knows what else he could have worked on if you know he had funding or other things happened. Yeah. So um, check out his work and uh, definitely watch the video. Um, and when you time. when you watch it, it's like whoa! They're actually talking about collaborative working at the same time with video conferencing. And it's so far ahead. It was you know over forty years ago. Yeah, it's crazy. He did a lot of work in interfaces too, didn't he? Yeah, really? he was really interested in, in <clears throat> and UX. I mean, before UX was a thing. Yeah, no one, no one was even thinking about it. So, okay. Next up, um, speaking of blast from the past, uh, Heathkit is back now. Um, unfortunately, like every Round year, three. every year, <laughs> I, every year I have the Heathkit is back uh, article or post. This so is, this is this is not the first time yeah. Heathkit's been back. I will say their logo is fantastic. Yeah, I've I mean, covered this on Make, That's and great. so this time that they're back, they had an FAQ. For real. And they said, is Heathkit back? Yes, we're back. So are you guys really going to make the Heathkits? Yes. Wow, is it that simple? Yes. Will Heathkit uh, products include entirely new designs? Yes. Now, the only problem well, is... They have to. Like, all the stuff that they use, <laughs> yeah. the old yeah. kids will just continue. Like, we can <laughs> yeah. buy a cathode tube. Yeah. So, well, maybe we would, but um, for fun. Um, but the interesting thing is they won't say who they are, and then they go into a bunch of, like, intellectual property talking, which is fine. But it's just—it's a little strange. It's a little, strange. It's, it's a little weird, and I have to say, after like the fifth time you're told Heath gets back, now yeah. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Is that the right term? Mm -hmm. So, anyways, Heath well, Kid folks, if you're out there, we'd love to say hi. Yeah. Maybe say who you are. It's, it's going to be like ham kits, though. You think so? Um, yeah. I mean, the survey question was like, do you have a key or like which shortwave radio is your favorite? I mean, it's like. Okay. Yeah. They, it's not. It's not. I don't think that Heathkit's aware that everyone's using like Arduinos and Raspberry Pis now. I think they're still kind of like ham radio. Do you think it's possible that Heathkit Heath. made cryogenic kits and they're just slowly defrosting some of the people from <laughs> a while ago and they're like, I don't oh, know. like, oh, we're back. Like, we'll just start running I the mean, company again. The, the ham radio space is ripe for for disruption. Um, I'm not sure that Heathkit is going to be that. They also made a big deal of the fact that. Everybody on their team is a ham. That's great. Like these, which is great. It's it's awesome. Yeah. But if the phones I, ever go down, like, they can get a hold of each other. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, it's interesting is like people are doing like software defined radio now. Like that's what's kind of the most interesting. The new thing. radio got uh, yeah. updated and released today. Yeah. Like people really dig that. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, I'll exactly, say. Like, how is that going to compete? With, and that plus like cell phones, how does that compete with? Him yeah. Video so, anyways, we right. want to we want to see it. Heathkit means a lot to a lot of people. Um, check out the site, read the FAQ, just like we did. We post it up, and uh, whether when, no matter what happens, we'll write about Heathkit. Yeah, you have like a yeah. Heathkit calculator. Yeah, it's um, the thing yeah, about the Heathkit stuff is it's really like well built. Yes. I have a bunch. I have like a, a Heathkit audio oscillator and a Heathkit um, modulator and all those, and yeah. it's like really built like a tank. All right. And next up, fifty years ago. Uh, news in the maker world, Hackaday um, is looking for a buyer, it's the site that I started uh, 10 years ago now, and Caleb Kraft is leaving Hackaday to go on to do something else. That's a nice logo. That's a nice logo. I made this mm. logo. And uh, uh, a couple of people asked if we're buying Hackaday. No, we're not. No, we're not. Um, okay. and I think they were asking a half million to a million. Um, they get around six uh, million page views a month. Um, that's pretty good without doing anything. I think they generate around ten thousand dollars worth of advertising revenue. Um, the Adafruit site has eleven million pages. We don't need those pages. Right. Um, so we're hoping that they invest in, in you know finding someone as good as Caleb. Cable is fantastic. Whatever he goes on to do is going to be fantastic. I know that he's a friend of Adafruit's. I really dug his portal gun. That was so cool with the yeah. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> he took a one one more. Yeah. One extra. Okay. So next up. 
Uh, Bunny has an excellent uh, translated article yeah. that's on his site. This is Please read it. yeah, it's we're, excellent. Th this part of the show is now the Bunny Hour. You know, do 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 do, do <laughs> Bunny Hour. Bunny had a lot of things going on this week. This week in Bunny. Yeah, this week in Bunny. So he's updated the open source hardware laptop. Yeah, check out the FPC with the logo on it. That's that cool. was really nice. And so he has a bunch of stuff about it. You got to see what he's up to. And he's it's so cool. And one of the things he said, he's like, look, if I sell these. I don't want to support them, so maybe in order to buy it, you have there's a Python program that you have to modify and submit to GitHub, and that's the order form. Oh, so cool, <laughs> so cool. No, because he's like, he's, he's like, I want it. I mean, we sell Bunny hardware like the Andy TV and the Chubby Hackle board, and it's and it's brilliantly designed, but it's kind of it's a little bit as is. You know, yeah. you have to know what you want and uh, and to do it because he's like he's a one guy shop. It's just Bunny. Yeah. Bunny is not like a, a, a team or like a band with like seven people. It's just really one guy. Yeah. But he, but like one bunny is like 15 or 20 people. Yeah, but he still only has 24 hours a day. Yeah. There's only one Tony Stark. There's only one bunny. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, next up, uh, this was also on Bunny's site. Um, you got a kick out of this, Lamore. This was the, um, the oh, name, the, the wear for yeah. June. Yeah. And uh, you had to guess what it is. And then um, someone guessed what Which it I was. Missed. Yeah, yeah. And someone guessed what it is. Like. So this is an iPhone 5 board. And you pointed out a couple interesting things. You want to talk about um, the, the two interesting things that yeah. you. Yeah. One interesting thing is there's no um, uh, silk screen. Yeah. It's what, just what black part? solder mask with like any gold pads, which is just funny as hell. <laughs> Second, um, it's got along the edge of the PCBs, it's got these multiple 50 ohm and 100 ohm impedance traces. So this is an imp I, I kind of knew that there was such a thing as impedance um, match, impedance tested boards, which you need for when you're dealing with extremely small RF cellular stuff. You just want to make sure that you're getting the most performance possible because battery life is important, space is important. You want to have the highest quality. And it, it, you know, the PCB is actually very expensive. A circuit board like that, um, probably the, at the scale that Apple's buying them is maybe like two dollars each at the most, maybe one dollar each. So. If you can uh, avoid problems later on and not use a bad $1 board, it can keep you from having to throw away a $200 assembly. Because what's expensive is the chips and the assembly cost and all that stuff. Yeah. So um, this board has these traces with these test pads. And so they can put an impedance tester on there to test to make sure that that, that serpentine is in fact a 50 ohm trace. There's also like, you can, you know, if you zoom into the image, you can see there's a 100 ohm one as well. So I thought that was really neat because it's like, oh, that's how they do it. Now I know. Okay. I know. Next, uh, yeah. this week. So it's the thickness of the copper. In okay. yeah. I have a fun Arduino thing. Um, okay. We launched the uh, NeoPixel Shield, and uh, the 4th of July came up. Yeah. And I wanted to show this cool video that someone did. That's really neat. That is cool. I really like that. I like that effect. I hope it releases the sketch. <coughs> I like the way it, it sort of exploits the automatic gain control on the camera. Yeah. So that it really seems dramatic when the thing goes off. Because it's like, oh, really bright, bright, and then it yeah. darkens down. Okay. Uh, next up. So we do these little um, state of the fruit things um, about our site. So Adafruit's now up to a million uh, page views a month, uh, almost two million visitors a month now. Um, special thanks to everybody on the web team, all the cool content you're posting. So this is for what? For everything? This is our Adafruit properties, yeah. So, all Adafruit. Yeah, okay. so we have Learn wow. and also our blog and, and, and website. Mm -hmm. So um, we wrap it all up into one because they're all very connected. The store is part of the blog and the learning system is part of the store and all that stuff. So we're doing pretty good. If you look, like Jan this year has been big. Um, lots of interesting stuff going on. Oh, this is year by year. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. This is what I wanted to show over the course of, since we started keeping track of it in 2009. Yeah. Wow, yeah, it's, it's yeah. in the last year, it's really, you can see it, it went up, and now, and then it's really went up high. Yeah. Okay, next up, mailbag. Go pack it, um, the mailbag. All right, next up, mailbag. This is a mailbag from Fran. Hello, Lamar, I discovered your site and company. I wanted to send a brief email to say how much I appreciate what you're doing. I grew up in the 70s and the uh, days of Heathkin and Radio Shack. It's uh, the real Radio Shacks. <laughs> when electronics was a common hobby, and kids brought me into electronics at an early age my favorite toy here. Although electronics design is no longer my primary occupation, I develop projects in my spare time, and I've been looking for a company to make kids' versions of particular cool projects as my current module Nixie system. Anyways, thanks for being out there and keeping electronics open available to new generations of engineers. You are awesome. Okay. All right. Moving on. Um, next, uh, Adafruit Learning System. Lady Ada, maybe you can talk about these briefly. Yes. 
I will. Adafruit Learning System has the best tutorials. We have like what, 270 tutorials, something ridiculous. Yeah. 250 at least. I remember we had 250. Um, okay, so this week we had some BeagleBone tutorials. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. BeagleBone Black. You don't have to have black nail polish, but it helps. Um, so the tutorial we wrote was um, Justin worked on the uh, BBIO library, which is our port of the Raspberry Pi IO library to the BeagleBone uh, and the I2C support. And the cool thing about that is it means that nearly all of our sensors, which we've written Raspberry Pi I2C drivers for in our LED matrices, so like um, the Lux sensor, um, seven segment matrix driver, um, some temperature sensor, I think that we did. I don't, I don't remember what other I2C sensors, but a bunch of them, like the um, accelerometer, I think we wrote a, a library for a Raspberry Pi. That will just work on the BeagleBone Black without having to do any code or modification. Um, the I2C library was originally originally written by K Town. So this is a K Town joint. <laughs> yeah. Next up. Next up. We uh, started to do a couple more little tutorials. Um, we have analog digital conversion in the BBIO library. And so this is a tutorial showing how to measure light from a resistive light sensor, such as an LDR, using an analog input on the BeagleBone. The BeagleBone has analog inputs, but they're only 1.8 volts. So you just have to um, just be aware of that. Use a 1.8 volt reference when you're um, doing analog inputs. And uh, in this case, you just do the pull up to 1.8 volts. Check out the tutorial. Um, use these analog inputs. It has them. We also have uh, a, a quickie three-in-one tutorial. This is how to use our um, capacitive touch sensors. So we have three capacitive touch sensors uh, that are driverless. They just they kind of just work. They have uh, inputs um, that are capacitive and then outputs that are just uh, digital outputs. So um, uh, from left to right, we have a momentary touch. You just touch it and the pin goes high. Toggle touch, you touch it and the pin goes high. Touch it again, the pin goes low. And then a five channel version, which uh, allows you to have five different inputs. And so we just have a, a quick tutorial on um, how to use those, wire them up, and some ideas on how to um, create capacitive touch pads, what you can use as materials. Okay. Next, uh, we have Warble Wednesday. Every week on Wearable Wednesday, we cover all sorts of things in the wonderful world of wearables. A couple quick events coming up on July 10th, uh, Wearable Broadcast with Becky Stern. Check out the Adafruit site for that. Wearable Tech Conference coming up July 24th and 25th. And uh, we have a fun video that was posted just recently using our sleep better by using some of the effects of the brain machine to kind of light stuff and make audio sounds and apparently it kind of like tricks your brain into relaxing. And here's the video. We're going to do another wearable teardown today everybody. It's the NeuroDreamer Sleep Mask from Cornfield Electronics and it's designed to help you fall asleep faster and rest easier. I already took it most of the way apart. Uh, all I had to do was unzip the face mask unzip the inner mesh pouch to find this molded foam piece containing all of the electronics. 
And then I asked Lady Ada to come over and help me discover those electronics. So here she is. Hey everybody, hey Becky. Let's check out this awesome NeuroDreamer mask. This is what came out of the mask. Taking this apart, we've These got the main pounds. board here. In the middle is a microcontroller. This is a Xylog. No, it'll say low bad. It's similar to an Arduino, but you much less expensive. Thing. So when you're going to manufacture, if you're going to make 5,000, 10,000, every dollar counts. These chips are like 50 cents, 25 cents. This is the LED light board for the eyes. So you have four LEDs. These are basic surface mount LEDs. You've got R for red, yellow, green, and then blue, which is on at this point. And there's little resistors for each one of them, and this connects with another flex cable to the main board. This flex connector is, is stiff enough that you can bend it, but it's still flexible enough that you can move it around. So it doesn't flop, but it is flexible. And then on the other side, there's basically a mirror version of it. So each eye has the same signal. And then over here we have the debug port. So if you want to reprogram this chip, download the compiler, upload your own blinky, bleepy designs. Down here is the analog section for the speakers. So big DC blocking caps, little filter resistors. That keeps the audio not too loud, pretty good quality, and make sure you don't damage the speakers. Up here, there's the power supply, and this is the LiPo charging circuit. So this circuit charges the rechargeable battery up here. Use the DC jack to do that. You want to make sure you have a good charging chip for live poly batteries. They're pretty sensitive. You want to make sure that they don't get damaged by overcharging or over discharging. So that's why you have a separate chip just for that. For this and many other teardowns, we use the Adafruit USB microscope and its articulated stand. All right. Okay. That was me and Becky. Um, that's kind of fun. I kind of like these wearable teardowns because um, there's a lot of really cool wearable tech out there, like um, like wearable sensors and like life blogging stuff and like this NeuroDreamer mask. And uh, I never have time to like take stuff apart anymore because I'm like so busy with Adafruit. So now I have like a great excuse to just like tear okay. something open and just like look at it under a microscope and look up some data sheets. And uh, it's kind of interesting to see the different techniques that different makers use. Yeah. So we have another one soon next week, so yeah, we have tune really, in. we have a really cool one coming up. Uh, and then next uh, 3D Thursday, every single Thursday, we cool. have some cool things in the world of 3D. This week, someone made a cool Permaproto printable thing on Aww. Thingiverse. Yeah, look at that. You can put your things you inside slip there. it in. That's kind of yeah. nice. Yeah, And then someone also made a fun um, joystick holder for our joystick. Yeah, basic but effective. Yeah. Just joystick. Right. Well, sometimes you don't want buttons. Pi Day, every Friday, lots of pie things. Uh, huge article on Wired posted uh, on Wired about the Raspberry Pi project and how they got to a million, so do check that out. And some fun photos from the factory. This is how the pies are made. And, That's uh, like a testing jig or yeah, something. Yeah, a giant tester. Or a reflow jig. Hard to tell. Yeah. And then uh, the other one is someone used, um, I believe, our tutorial to make light paintings with pie. Mm. Yay! Go America. Yeah. And then last up, Magpie, the uh, Raspberry Pi magazine has issue 14 that just came out, I believe. So do check that out. All about camera module. Yeah. All right. Next up, it's now time to talk to John. Hey, look. Hey, look. John Janeer. Is here. All right. Live so, and in person. Yeah. So um, folks, can, so folks can, uh, oh, John can say there we go. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you're a... Uh, Mic batteries went dead, so sorry, folks. As you were getting lower and lower and lower, okay. we have to recharge her batteries once in a while. Um, so now we're okay. So John, I'm gonna um, ask you some questions just okay. to get the just to get all the questions out of the okay. way that everyone's gonna ask. So folks, you can start okay. asking um, uh, photography questions, John Engineer questions. Actually, now's actually a good time for us to swap, so I'll be ready for new products. Okay, do you want to yeah, do a little a little a chair a let's chair, do a swap a chair sliding? Okay, great. Wait, I'm gone. Hi, Hold John. on. Goodbye, Lady Ada. Bye. Hey, Phil. How you doing? Pretty good. So let's first, I'm going to first get to the, 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 the number one question. John, what camera do you use for these photos? Nikon D800. Nikon D800. Okay. Um, okay. I found this graphic because everyone always asks, Canon versus Nikon. Look, they made, they made it out of Canon oh, and Nikon. Oh, my God. That's yeah. taking it too far. Come yeah. on. Which, which one, John? It doesn't really matter. Yeah. It, what? It, it, if, you, if you have thousands of dollars worth of Canon lenses, buy a Canon. I had thousands of dollars with the Nikon lenses, so I went with Nikon. Yeah. So um, there are some differences within the line. Canon had a real advantage for a long time, but Nikon sort of caught up. 
Canon accessories do seem to be priced a little more reasonably than Nikon, though. But that's just Nikon's always been like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there any camera on the horizon you're really excited about? Uh, no, the D800 was the one I was really excited about. Yeah. And now that I have one, I, really it's like fully it. justified. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's good that you're not like, that. Oh, this is disappointing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so a lot of people have been able to tell the difference uh, from when you started. The, the product photos look fantastic. Uh, we're doing a lot of reshoots. We have a lot of special projects that you're working on where the photos are great. How many um, products do you shoot a week right now here at Adafruit? Uh, it depends on the week, but I would say normally between like five and ten new products a week. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. Uh, next up, uh, what has been your favorite thing to shoot so far? Oh, I, I got to uh, get all these out of the way. The arcade button. The arcade button. The red arcade button. Okay. But all of them. All right. So this is uh, the. This That's is, my desktop background, actually. You I like love this that photo. picture. Just because it was like a lot of fun to sort of conjure up Kubrick yeah. in a product photo for a button. Like yeah, and then you know a couple of people in the chat have, have asked like what do you what do you use what are you using the background and, and the surface for these things because you have obviously it's not it's not a plain old white background. Um, that was actually the wall of the studio. It's just I lit it darker than the rest of the scene so it looks gray. Yeah. Um, so it's down a couple stops from what pure white would be, gotcha. and it's right at the bottom because that's where the light is and then it gradiates up. Gotcha. And, and you don't use any Photoshop reflections. If something's a reflection, it's because there's the surface yeah. is reflected. I, I don't mirror anything in Photoshop. You don't do anything like that no. at all. My experience, that actually looks bad. It looks fake. It looks really fake. Yeah, it's because it's too perfect, right? It's too perfect. Yeah, when real reflections, they have, you'll see little distortions or um, just changes in the tonality yeah. that make it look real. And then um, I want to go through, um, this is like a John Genier retrospective. I want to go <laughs> through. Some other photos that Soon you to did. be at the Whitney. Yeah. Um, so these are all the buttons. And then this was the, the pie stuff. Um, a lot of people who probably know some of your works on Flickr um, probably saw this. This is, I think, yeah. one of your earlier photos when you were playing It's your noir with. phase. Yeah. That's right, my hack of noir. <laughs> and then this was the hacko that you shot here. Right. It's better than their, like, official product photo. They should probably have asked us to, like, use that for their pro I mean, it is, like, the best hacko photo ever. Thank you. Like, everyone yeah. wants, like, that hacko. Like, you want that hacko. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, I did true. want to ask you, and again, these are all questions. Oh, I have to ask, is film dead? No. No, okay. Good. Especially, well, <laughs> color film may be dead because it's expensive to produce the chemicals and there's very yeah. limited demand, but black and white film will, will never die. It'll it's never like, die. It's like saying um, oil paint is dead. Somebody's always going to want to use it because it's got a look. But watercolor is completely dead. <laughs> Your watercolor is okay, probably dead. I just want to make sure. All right. Yeah. And then um, before I go on to the next round of photos, someone wants to know, um, do you ever use an automated motion rig to take multiple shots of the macro lens and combine them for an increased depth of field? I don't, um, I don't use an automated rig. I use my fingers. And I just, so you'll do multiple yeah. ones? Um, one of the things I like is w with fixed macro lenses, they tend to have much larger focusing rings. So you can really sort of get some fine control over where the focusing point is. Yeah. And um, so I just sort of slowly inch it. And if yeah. you stop down enough, you'll get enough overlap that you can um, focus stack. It takes some practice, but eventually you'll be able to do it. You don't need to automate it. Do, do you think being, because you're an engineer, in addition to being a, a great photographer, do you think that being an engineer has been really helpful as a photographer? Or is, has it, like, it, what are the, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, specifically just an understanding light, because light is just an electromagnetic wave. and. Once you've had to endure Maxwell's equations, you never want to. Right angle rule. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right hand rule, all that good stuff. But no, you really think about like how stuff propagates through space and how it reflects off something and how it's absorbed or, or reflected. Yeah. Well, I, th I, I think it's neat because Lamore can hand you a, a new product, or you and I could talk about something, and you actually know everything that is in the product. You actually know the difference between yeah. the chips or resistors. You actually know what thing to focus on, you know, about headers. I mean, all these things, like, I, I've, I've never met a photographer who's been an engineer. So yeah, I, it's true. It's a, and it's I can a also uh, flash my own code if I need to, to yeah, make it do something. Yeah, if you need to edit something. Yeah. That's, like, I actually think that might be, the, the if you want to be a photographer, um, it probably doesn't hurt to be an engineer. <laughs> yeah. It never hurts right? to be an engineer, no matter what you want yeah, to do. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. To, like, having that understanding is really helpful. And, uh, and you're also working on maybe a couple new products. You have some things coming in there. Yeah, working I'm working on, on some designs. So one of the things I wanted to show, because this has been one of the things that I think everybody says this is a challenge. So um, taking photos of LEDs, 
Yeah. Right? Like, we talk about this all the time. Like, this is just hard to do. This is hard stuff to do. Why is it so hard to, to take photos of LEDs? And that's a nice photo, by the way. That's a great Thank photo. <laughs> Why uh, is it so th hard? This one was actually uh, easier because it's diffused. Yeah. Um, the segments are diffused, so you don't have, like, this concentration in the center of this, like, just column of really, really bright light. Um, because what happens when you have that is you have that really, really bright light and then the rest of it, and there's a contrast ratio that's way too high for the camera sensor to really handle and for you to get all of it in one shot. And yeah. if you try to add more light to the scene, it just ends up getting into the LED and washing it out. Yeah. So what I ended up doing, even with this, was you kind of put the LED part in shadow and you light around it. Oh, okay. And you can... If you do that, or if the light is at a, at a regish enough angle, so that, let's say, the LED is sticking out this way, and the light's coming in at a shallow enough angle, you won't wash it out, but you'll still light it up. If you go to the NeoPixel shield in the next photo, the light's coming in. It's sort of raking it at an angle. It's actually coming from the back. Gotcha. Um, and these are still a little washed out, but they're clear enough that you can tell that they're LEDs. Yeah. And also the fact that they're out of focus sort of takes that one bright spot and spreads it out a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, one thing that someone asked in the chat. Uh, so you also do fritzing, which is all our parts library. Yes. A special shout out for the fritzing. People uh, really like it to, at their product project. How does that relate to the stuff that you're doing? Um, so you, you may photo a product. Right. And then later on, you may redraw it as a vector. Yeah. Uh, the main thing with that is um, because, especially if you have the thing in your hand, you just kind of have to look at how the light falls on it. And you can make the fritzing look really lifelike by using a lot of gradients and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much where my, I think that it's basically understanding how light falls on things. Yeah. What it does and, and what different contours will do. Like so, like a beveled edge or something is going to have a certain profile. Yeah. It's going to get really hot in one spot and then it's going to fade off to dark. And yeah. And with the gradients, it, you know, because they kind of look like a little brush metal, like you can kind of use them yeah. in a way that, that make it, it's like, ooh, look, it's gold. But you can use a gradient so it looks like it's like, you know, it's a trace or something like yeah, that. Yeah, if, if you use a, a light enough touch with it, you pretty much gradient, gra gradient all the things. Because <laughs> everything looks more realistic when there's a gradient, because nothing in life is, is an absolute solid anything. So. Yeah. Um, someone asked, did you ever, do you ever take photos of people? You do, in fact, on our Flickr set right now. Yes, I do. There's a, a fantastic photo of Our Lady Ada. That's Yay! Really yeah, so check out our Flickr set. Uh, and yeah, also, you took a photo of yourself. Yeah, well, right. John has a photo of you. Yeah. You have a photo of you. That was like right after I set up the studio. That's your selfie. And I was checking my selfie. I was checking yeah. the overhead light, and I just snapped the shutter. And then um, just to wrap up with this before we go into new products, um, you, you're doing a series of manufacturing photos. I'm going to show these, and then you can talk about the series. So this is the pick and place. Yep. And then um, this is the first time anyone's ever taken artistic photos of a pick and place. Um, this is the reels that come out of the Samsung. And... Uh, you know, these also look yeah, like these are cool. uh, slices. Cross sections of like space marine weapons. Yeah, but these are actual reels that we use. Lady Ada, how much are these reels for the pick and place? Oh, the, yeah, these are the, the feeders that um, Yeah, I'm hold, sorry, feeders. Yeah, they're yeah. feeders that hold uh, tape and reel. Um, so an eight millimeter feeder, I think is like $675. And we have like 25 or 30 of those. Um, we have one 32 millimeter feeder, which was uh, $3,000. So we use that feeder for GPS modules. Our GPS modules come on a 32 millimeter uh, tape and reel. Uh, so we had to, to, to use them, we had to get a feeder. It was a $3,000 feeder. So yeah, not only do you have to buy the pick and place, but then every feeder Yeah, on top we don't of it. have any loans or venture funding. So if anyone ever asks, like, why are we asking John to all take my these money, beautiful photos? All my money's in feeders. Six, $600 for, for feeders. Of course we're going to take That's photos the low of this end. thing. Yeah, yeah low yeah. end is 600 it's the most expensive model I've ever worked with. <laughs> yeah, and then last up, you just did these. Um, these are these are gorgeous. These are the stencils. Yeah. That we use, and you did some interesting things here. Man, what, do you, what is this? It's like Space Invaders on this one, and then this is like. Yeah, this one. Um, cover of a new Stephen King novel. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I, I kind of don't know what was the going stencil. on there either. I'm kind of like. The stencils. <laughs> I'm looking at. I was I was looking at this, and I put the light behind it, and I'm like. You know what? This would look better with smoke because everything looks better with smoke. Okay. So I actually, it's actually steam. smoke and gradients. If you smoke learn, and if you learn right. one thing today, <laughs> so it's, yeah. yeah, it's actually steam, but it um, steam. it came out really, 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 okay. really cool. Somebody yeah. said I, I made it um, look like a cathedral. Yeah, it has a little bit of a cathedral look. 
Well, if you like the um, church's stencil here. If you look at like mosques, they have like filigreed mm -hmm. um, wor uh, work in the in the. Um, it's, not, it's not stained glass. It's like filigreed like stone or wood. Kind of has a little bit of that that feeling. Yeah, and especially with like incense and stuff, it, yeah. the light comes through and it really. Yeah. So we're gonna save some time at the end of the show. Uh, folks have more questions, but they asked a bunch of uh, uh, neat questions. Um, if someone wanted to get started, they have a little kit company that products. Um, what are uh, you have an article about how to take photos? We, right. We've talked about that, but is there any? If someone had to, because I always get asked this question, and you always get asked, if they have to spend money on something, should they spend all their money on a camera? Should they spend on lights? Should they? What, like, if they can only dedicate their budget to one thing, what would you say is is the thing to, to spend money if, on? If I could only spend money on one thing, um, or maybe two things, I would buy a reasonably good camera and a really good lens. Yeah. Like just for taking, like like a really dedicated macro lens. For the close-ups of the the, yeah. the product. And then go outside, and use like open shade. Yeah. Um, to take a photo. That's true. Lighting is free. If it's yeah, the best the best light source is the sun. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. it's it's got like the most pure spectrum and it's everywhere. There's a lot of it outside. There's a lot of it. All right. Well, thank you, John. All That's right. That's what I would so, say. Okay. Uh, before we go off to new products, code is AltaVista. Ten percent off everything in stock in the Adafruit store. Lady Ada, you know what time it is. New products. We need a new product <laughs> tune. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. All right. New product. Okay. Get on it, somebody. Yeah. First up. Squishy Cable. Squishy Cable. This is a, a Phil B request. Um, Phil B's been doing a lot of stuff with pixels and wearable stuff. And he's like, hey, you know, there's this um, silicone wire that's really good for wearables work. And I was like, okay, so I got a sample of it. And it's actually kind of cool. It's, um, I mean, the photo uh, is really good, but I'll also show it on the overhead. So it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's clear, so it's a little tough to see, but there's four conductors inside. And it's 24 uh, wire gauge, and it's like super, super flexible because it's silicone. So um, I mean, it is you know waterproof. Of course, you want to heat shrink the you know what ends to whatever if you want to maintain the waterproofness. But it's just really soft and flexible, and um, you can like twist it around a lot, and it it won't break. So this is very good for wearables or for anything where there's a lot of motion, maybe robotics as well. So I thought it'd be kind of interesting to carry some of this. So we we have it in store. Yeah. Sort of like the gummy worm of cables. Yeah, it's 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 really it's very interesting stuff. And uh, you know, since John, the photographer's here, John, was this uh, difficult to shoot at all, or is this straight up like? Uh, it actually, every time I rolled it up, it kept unraveling until Becky did a special like. Becky not. Wearable, oh. secret oh. knowledge. She was thing. in the Girl Scouts. <laughs> yeah. That's why. Uncooperative. But it was cool. Model here. This, Once I got it to photograph, like the refraction in there, that was like the coolest yeah, thing ever. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. Next up, Lady Ada. What's this? Pi reference card. I thought this was kind of a cute idea. Um, it's a little circuit board and it's super skinny and it fits onto the Raspberry Pi. And so if you're using um, just like a uh, female header breakout cable, um, not like a Pi cobbler, it labels all the pins for you. So I was like, yeah, it's a really good idea. So um, we also shot a really great photo of it on the Pi. It works with both uh, V2 and V1 Pi. You just flip it over for V1 because there's like two pins that are slightly different. The, the numbers are different. And I'll just show it on the overhead, but yeah, you just slip it on. Can I go to the overhead? Oh, you want to go to yeah. the overhead? Sorry. On the overhead? Yeah. I'm getting there. We're getting there. Uh, okay. So here <laughs> you got your Raspberry Pi, and it's designed so it can only go one way. Oh, it can't go this way. It can only go on this way, so that's really handy. Hmm. And um, it slides on, and it gives you plenty of extra header, and then you're like, oh, which pin is 5 volt? Oh, yeah, it's that pin. And then if you're like, oh, I have to connect to like I squared C or whatever, you can really easily um, figure out which pin is what. So it's really handy. It's really cute. I think if you're using a cobbler, you might not need it. But if you're just connecting wires uh, directly, it's very handy. OK. It's a good idea. Next up, uh, I got this little uh, Pi camera holder. Yeah, Pi camera. I actually don't have um, the assembled Pi camera holder, so we'll just use it, look at these photos. Yeah. But it's uh, two pieces of uh, laser cut plastic from Pi Moroni. They make the Pi bow. And um, it, it's a really handy little adjustable holder. You can adjust the height and the angle. And it has a hole in it that can fit a quarter 20. So um, that's the sort of standard camera mount. So if you have a quarter 20 hex nut, which you can get like at any hardware store for 25 cents, or they'll probably just give it to you if you ask for one, um, you can attach it to a tripod. So yeah. okay. maybe check out the tripod yeah, we'll photo. Uh, just so folks know, um, we don't have Pi cameras. Um, there's 
seriously delayed. We got sent some. We were asked to send them back. Yeah. So we, we don't have we any. We have negative cameras. Yeah, we, we don't have any. This, we have a lot of people signed up for them. The second we get them in. If yeah, we had them. This is completely outside our We would control. totally have them. We don't have them. Yeah, we're trying to do everything. Um, it's just there is no pie cameras. OK, next up. Um, oh, can I'm, you show the one with the, the tripod? Uh, the yeah, one before then? Sorry. Yeah. yeah, so you can see it attached to a tripod. Yay. Right. Go tripod. OK, next up. Um, next up, uh, this next thing is being called the Raspberry Pi of telescopes. This is the Celestron, uh, sorry, Celestron uh, first scope. And uh, these are just some of the photos that um, the company has. Uh, it's a low cost telescope for kids, but it's also for adults. One of the cool things is around the scope itself, it has lots of names of astronomers and, and scientists and people who discovered all sorts of things about the cosmos. And uh, look at these happy people using it together. It's actually really, um, really good quality. Um, yeah. Scope it's and very durable. It's really durable too. I was actually kind of surprised. I was sort of expecting like, oh, is it like cheap, like particle board, and like it'll fall apart, and like because we've got a sample of it. But um, I was really impressed with the quality. It is a really, really nice um, scope for the price. Yeah, and if um, since this is a bigger thing, I'm gonna. It's also heavy. It doesn't <laughs> doesn't uh, vibrate at all. Yeah, yeah. They've got these really nice rubber scared. bumpers yeah. on the bottom. And this, the the whole. Rotating it all rotates, well. and it's yeah, it's got this little um, rotating lazy susan thing, which yeah, is solid, right and it doesn't um, jiggle at all. Like it's it's very solid. Um, yeah. It's if got I caps. Can, yeah, when I look through this, I can see everybody watching. Ask an engineer. <laughs> oh, I see you. Yeah, don't do that. I see you. Okay, so um, this is pretty neat, and it's at a great price, and we think there's going to be some fun hacks for it, and uh, we're really excited about it. And it comes with a couple lenses, and this is. Uh, one of the new things that we're adding to our young engineer category. We're all going to do a Pi thing with yeah, this. Yeah, we want to maybe see if we yeah. can put a stepper motor on it to motorize it um, and move it around. Um, and then you can also, this moves up and down too. So with two steppers or two servos, yeah. you might be able to do some basic um, tracking, which I thought would be really it, neat. It's also uh, uh, useful in the daytime too. I was using it outside and you can see really far away. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so very cool scope. Okay. A great beginner scope. Yeah. Uh, next up. Telescope. Lady Ada is super lucky. 40 pin FPC to breakout adapter plate. This is really lucky. This is the <laughs> luckiest product we have. It is super lucky. Um, I designed it for myself, actually, and I actually designed it like two or three years ago when I was first doing like OLED and TFT stuff. Um, it's just an adapter from 40 pin FPC to breadboard because uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff with OLEDs and displays, and they all have like slightly different pitches and. Sometimes they don't even use connectors. Sometimes you actually have to solder um, it directly on. And um, I can show that yeah. here, for example, on an yeah, OLED right. that I'm not using. Whoa, hold on. So this is the adapter plate. And you can see there's 0.5 millimeter, uh, 0.6 millimeter, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and 1 millimeter. And then it has um, a 2 by 20 breakout over here. And then it also breaks them out on the sides. So you can, if you have one of those like, really big breadboards, like with the multiple, like this, um, full size breadboard side by side. Um, this will plug in nicely. So yeah, for example, like this, it has like a, a strange connector that it doesn't use um, a socket. You actually, it's supposed to be soldered directly on. So in this case, I would, um, oh, you know, put it directly on top sure. of like the 0.8 or oh, okay. 0.7. I've got, I've got a, uh, a photo of it too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I can also go the other end. Oh, can you? Yeah, can you go back? Go back Okay, so you would, you would line it up to the FPC and then solder it, and then you could connect to it on the breakout. So um, it's something that I used. Um, this OLED actually didn't end up being in, in a product. It wasn't good enough for us. But uh, to test all of them, I needed a tool, and so I made a bunch of these. And then I was like, hey, you know, this could be really handy for people. So um, I put Super Lucky on it, and uh, it's in the store. OK. Check it out. And then uh, next up. Get your luck on. Uh, this is the one that gave John some hard time. John, you had a hard time on this one. Sorry. Tell, yeah. yeah. What was this like? This is yeah. one of the perils of, of operating Adafruit in the middle of Manhattan. <laughs> yeah, what was so, going on here? Um, yeah, in order to get this um, without any sort of uh, lines from missing the window for the refresh rate, I had to use one-tenth of a second shutter speed. And all day long, the one train just running underneath the building. Yeah. And it kept shaking it, and it was driving me nuts until like later in the, much later in the day, and I was able to actually get all these pictures without any shake Yeah, we asked them to stop the all. trains, but they wouldn't do it. Yeah, they wouldn't do it. I don't know. <laughs> We're trying to take photos up yeah, here. Yeah, I remember when I when I first shot the LCDs and OLEDs, I would, I'd take it down to like 120th. That was like the only way, or 150th even. 
Yeah. Because that's the only way to get it. Because otherwise, yeah. it, it, you know, it refi it's a passive matrix. OLEDs are passive matrix, not active matrix at this size. And so it's hard to uh, get all the pixels. But we do have you, all the pixels. Do you want to show it? Yeah, sure. Let's, okay. show, let's show it on the internet. We also have great photos, but uh, some people want to watch it live. So you can actually see the refresh rate if the light's on. But if they turn the light off, the, the yeah. shutter speed goes down. So I'll reset it. So this is just a graphics test. So this is a really nice big OLED. Um, it can do, you know, all of our graphic stuff, text, lines. Um, on the back is an SD. Yeah, this is the, the SPI code. On the back, actually, um, I don't remember if this one, but some OLEDs have like built-in line drawing and rectangle drawing techniques, so you, it actually is built in, which is kind of nice. But what's really cool about OLEDs is you can see them from any angle very, very well, which is not true for most low-cost CSTN or LCDs or even TFTs. So um, it's super skinny. You know, the refresh is just because of the camera. In reality, it's a very steady image. Um, it's really crisp and really beautiful, and the contrast is excellent because each pixel is an OLED. It's actually an LED, so the black is true black. So you don't get that kind of grayish black that you get with TFTs because there's a the backlight. There's no backlight here. It also means it's very low power. Um, you only light up the pixels that you need to, so it uses a lot less power than a TFT because you don't have to light this huge backlight. And then on the back, I'll turn this off. Um, you can see the connector. We have a level shifter, so it's 5 volt, 3 volt compliant. A um, little boost converter for the OLED and a micro SD socket. We have some code to load bitmaps from the SD. So, yeah, you can do anything. 1.5 inch display. It's really nice. And we're going to have 1,000 different varieties soon. It's for John to take of OLEDs. Yeah. That's great. Well, I'm, I'm going to go to Staten Island and do all yeah. those. I'm, uh, I'm trying to get more OLEDs. Um, these were the first few. I actually have a contact now at the OLED factory that I like the most. Um, so, hopefully, we'll be able to get more because sometimes it's hard if you're not you know, a camera company or like a, a um, sorry, a cell phone company to get um, displays. They just won't sell them to you at the quantities, but hopefully I can get them to okay. sell me 1.7 and 1.3 inch displays as well. All right. A little tight on time, but we still have some time. Uh, we're going to uh, end new products. That's new products. Thank you, Lady Ada. No problem. Do, 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 do. New pleasure. products. Okay. Yeah, you know, one thing that we're going to make, John, um, as a little lighting rig, so we have more control over the, the lighting for the overhead. Oh, yeah. You and I can talk about that later. I don't know. we got to do that. It's on my long list of things. OK. We finally got we finally got an Ask an Engineer spot. So yes. it's only uh, four years coming up soon this in August. Ask an Engineer Corner. This is Ask an Engineer Corner. It's like a, a wildlife preserve. That yeah. No one's allowed to put bubble wrap here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we're going to do a quick top secret thing. Uh, we have a couple of top secret products. Uh, it's not out yet. Don't Super ask. secret. Yeah. So first one, behold, that cube. It's a cube. This is a big old LED cube. Yeah, we made an LED cube out of these um, 32 by 32 matrix um, displays. Not the ones you have in the store. They're actually a little bit bigger. They're a larger pitch because we had to cram the electronics inside. Yeah. But this will be a tutorial that we will have. It won't be a product, but we will show you how you can build your own. And this one, it uh, takes HDMI video, and so this is actually a... Uh, uh, an animated GIF that we downloaded from the internet yeah. of Endless Fantasy, which is an album you should buy to support James. Yeah. And, and Amada Gucci. Yeah. All right. And then next up, world Who premiere. Tutorial? World premiere. This next product will be out on Monday. This is the new assembled Motor Shield. New and improved. New for 2013. Our popular Motor Shield. Stackable design. Stackable design. It does everything. You can control up to, like, I think... What is it? Let's There's see. five bits on there. Five so. bits, so what's two to the fifth? I don't even know. Four, 16, 32. Seven, 32? Yeah, 32. 32 times two, so you can control up to 64 stepper motors. Yeah. That's madness. Madness. <laughs> and also, this is Adafruit. That's yeah. like a crazy spider with eight legs on each of eight legs. But it's with steppers. It's spiders all the way down. And a fantastic photo from John. So this will be yeah, in the store on photo. Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a big deal. We have to pick and place them. This is a big deal. Hopefully we'll do that on Monday. Yeah. This is, if the picking place doesn't This is the break down. best motor shield made. Well, it's already, it's just an improvement of the existing motor shield. So it's fully stackable, as many as you want, up to 64. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> up to 32. Or, thir or uh, 128 DC motors. 120 DC motors, as long as you can power it. Um, one, 1 1.3 amps per segment. Um, so you can do like a 2 amp stepper, 3 amp peak. Yeah. It has protection FET on there in case you put your power in backwards. 
uh, has some prototyping space, it's assembled, so There's you just put There's a lot of people on. who want to do a lot of things, and they've been waiting for something like this. Yeah. It's well, it's like, interesting, the Moto Shield is like product like number like 54. Yeah. Like, it, it is like a long time ago, probably yeah, 54 now. This one is like f uh, 1438 or something, yeah, 1448. Yeah, we're up to uh, 1400 and like 50 something products. Yeah, 1450, so this is yeah. 1400 products ago. 1400 products, yeah. Okay. I, also, I also think the motor shield is actually one of my favorite looking boards. Yeah. I don't know why, I just kind of like the way it looks. It looks muscly with the headers on it. Look at that. Yeah. Looks like it's going gonna, to it's gonna drive into a, like it's a, it's going to go into a beach and soldiers are going to pop out and save the world. Yeah. Yeah. On Monday. On Monday. <laughs> uh, See, so yeah, i got to finish this tutorial. But uh, yeah, I have a new library. Yeah. Um, it's cool. Yeah. It's going to be Tutorial. You can stack them. You can... Make them it's a lot cool. easier. I can't wait to see the projects. That's the cool part about this. Okay, um, we're going to do a speed round of some questions, real quick. John Engineer photo questions, of course. Lady Ada Engineer questions. John Engineer engineer questions. All right. Word. Um, oh, I can answer one of these. Uh, so uh, someone wants to know what's the status of Gemma. We're getting really close to launching. Oh, we Gemma. are really close. Yeah, Gemma's about to come out. Ooh, we are so close. Yeah. And we have another product that'll come out after Gemma that I can't talk about yet. We have we have the final, <laughs> the final prototype PCBs for Gemmas are coming in on Tuesday. So once I assemble those yeah. and test them, and if it all passes, which hopefully it will, because this is now like yeah. the third or fourth revision, we've I've just it's been improved and updated. So it looks a little bit different. Um, we test it and get it working, and then we'll order PCBs. So yeah, it takes a couple weeks after that, but it is okay. happening. What is the clock enable pin on a shift register? Uh, you probably mean uh, output enable. Okay. Not, I'm concerned about yeah. heat generation from a voltage hey. regulator for a wearable project, about Unless 5 amps it. at 7 volts. Do you think heat would be a major factor here? Um, if it's less than an amp, you probably don't have to worry about it. If, you're, um, if you are worried about it, um, we have a buck converter in the store that can do up to 3 amps. Um, which is way more than you probably need. Um, you can also wrap it in foam or something so it doesn't touch a person. Okay. Um, do you have any suggestions or good books, websites to read to learn about building things that break less for mechanical 3D print design? No, but uh, uh, Matt Griffin, who participates in our Google Plus community about 3D printing all the time, post up your question there. He'll see that. Yeah. And he showed me some book that had all these like support structure things, 3D, 3D printing stuff. Um, next up. Uh, did you find someone to be capping? No, we still haven't done the cappy tryouts. I had to push it off for another week. I'm hoping to do it next, next week. Um, next up, have we got any news on the Arduino Young shipments? No, but you know what would be really helpful? If folks um, email the Arduino folks and say, hey, we really want Adafruit to stock the new Arduinos, the Arduino bot, because we get asked a lot, but we're, um, we can only wait until our shipment comes in yeah. or when we're allowed to order them. So the more that our customers ask Arduino, um, would be the most. We, yeah, we cannot, really we, until, until it's um, activated in the website, we just can't order it. Okay, is there a quick and dirty way to use an IR sensor with 5 volt output on a Raspberry Pi? Um, yeah, we have a tutorial, oh, an IR sensor or an IR, what is it, an IR what? IR sensor on a 5 volt output on a Raspberry Pi. Um, I, if it's an IR remote sensor, we have a tutorial on, on uh, using uh, LIRC with a Raspberry Pi if you look at the learning system. Okay. Uh, where can I find a library to direct drive a matrix of LEDs? I do not want to use a driver chip. Yeah. I don't know of any of any good libraries. I, I would suggest using a driver chip because it is a real pain in the ass to do otherwise. So wants to know where the best place is to buy LiPos. I think our default answer is the Adafruit store. Adafruit right? store. Yeah. Actually, the Lull Shield library is, is pretty good, but it's not a matrix. It's Charlie Plax. But if it, the Lull Shield library should work, kind yeah. of. It does a lot. You need a lot of pins, though. All right. Oh, and Matt was in the chat. He said there's a great books about when buildings fail, etc. We'll share this week. Okay, perfect. Great. That's great. Cool. And he showed me this cool book. I uh, was looking at it. it had um, all these like 3D printed models and like all these different things about them. It was, it was kind of. We have a MakerBot at uh, at home. Yeah. And uh, we've been printing out our prototypes for our. We have a code case. for it. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Our, our <coughs> BeagleBone case. We already have a Raspberry Pi case. I don't know if they still do it, but Autodesk um, used to have. You, if you were a student, you could get Inventor for free. Yeah. And Inventor actually has like its own finite element system in it. Yeah. Where you can stress test stuff and see where the weak points are. Well, this bridge 
break. Is there like yeah. a thing where it's like shove it off of a table or like my cat jumped? <laughs> no, on you'd have well, you'd have to figure so out what the force is. Cats, you know, like yeah, like oh. but you can see where the weak spots and the, where the stresses are. Yeah, it turns and red like and like green. Yeah, it's, it's it also like, looks very sciency and impressive when you. Yeah, do it, so. it does. It does. And okay. I've seen it. It has like the rainbow gradient thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, All right. Very scientific. It's trivia question time, Lady Ada. What are the rules? Uh, okay. Welcome to the trivia question. Uh, the rules are if you've won something from this trivia question uh, contest before, you can't enter. So go and look at the moon or something with your telescope. Yeah. What's the prize? Uh, the prize today is uh, what color OLED? Color OLED. Ooh. Okay. First person to type this in the chat, I'm going to be the final decision maker on this one. Uh, Douglas Engelbert gave a demo in December 9th, 1968, where he showed. Uh, Mice, video conferencing, hypertexting. What is it commonly referred to as now? Were you watching the internet last week? Because yeah. if you were or earlier on our show, what was this? What was this what called? Is it? The Wikipedia Colo article about it. Colloquially known. Yeah. Is that the word? Colloquially. 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 Park is not the answer. Park. What is the name of this demo that he did? It's also not telescope. Yeah. It's not Engelbart Arama. Yeah. Bobcat. That'd Congratulations, cool. you won. The that mother awesome. of all demos. The mother of all demos. Which is true. It just showed everything. Welcome to everything. And you should call it the everything you know what? It's, it's kind of cool. I want to imagine him like going and doing this demo, dropping the mic, and just walking out. <laughs> yeah. He's like, that would be cool if you also showed how to do that. He's they, like, they didn't even have. They didn't have drop mics. They drop didn't. mics or MCs or yeah. brush his shoulders specials. off and just walks out the room. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, also, like, saying a Jay Z song. It's crazy. You know, I, I'll, I'll say this because the more I read about him and I, and I rewatch those videos, it, physics, I think, had a similar thing where you had these massive minds at one point in physics. Yeah. And Einstein would come along, Niels Bohr would come along. And Feynman. they're like, we don't know the math. Feynman. We don't have the math for it, but we know this is true. But, but no, they were just these, these single individuals that just made so much discovery and could bend your mind. And I think for computer science, he probably was one of those that yeah. could go up and do a, a live demo, a live demo that worked. Like, we, like you can't even. You know, we can't do that. Like, well, Should no, that? like, this is hard to pull off. And, yeah. you know, like, every other Apple Same, keynote. Microsoft was like, can't do it, yeah. Yeah, like, every other Microsoft keynote, everything just it doesn't work. But this, this is a live demo of people manipulating code together, a video conferencing thing. So, um, what, a, what a, a, an interesting person. And uh, the fact that we have video of it, and it's on YouTube kind of completes the circle. <laughs> and like yeah. we're all watching it together, chatting and talking about this. Yeah. Really cool. So I don't know who the other person is that's that's existing right now that's done a demo that's just, like one day we'll look back and say, I can't believe what just happened. But I hope they're around. I think it's harder because it's like in, in physics, you, there isn't a single I think it comes in waves discovery. where there's like a, you know, a compression of these people and then there's like a rarefaction where there's nobody and then it comes back again. Actually, what I really miss is in like the 80s, like they invented Ytalk for like Linux, like mm -hmm. Linux, for Unix computers. And like it, now people use IM, but I actually like the talk version where you saw people typing in real time. Then they took that away. Now it's like you send little packets, which I understand it, it's better for the, the network. But I kind of miss it because it was kind of fun to see like somebody actually type in real time. We, and you don't have a messaging client that does yeah. that. And he did a demo that coordinated with other people and they were elsewhere. Yeah, oh. that's cool. You can't, you can't do that now. Yeah. You can't like if you go to like CES, like every you know, oh my phone, the phones don't work, nothing works. Yeah. And everything yeah. blows up. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, go watch the video if you haven't. Yeah. Congratulations, Bobcat. Email support at adafruit.com so you can get your OLED color OLED. Um, we have a new picture of MOSFET this week. I know you guys have been waiting for it. Yeah. Well, I took the photo right before he left. He's like, okay, meow. He he knew we we're going off to the show without him, and then here he is. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, that's it. John Janier, thank you so much for coming out. My All pleasure. Right. And thank you for uh, talking some photos and some engineering. Sure. And uh, you shot those Motor Shield photos today. I did. Yeah. Right before this. Yeah. And they're glorious. I can't yeah. wait to put them in the store. Okay. We'll see everybody yeah. uh, next week. And um, more new stuff, more cool stuff. And uh, here is your moment of Zener. Can I take this off now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we were, Phil and I were using that to uh, view the kidding department in, in the wild. We saw a Stefan.